It's no secret that the world is moving over to electric vehicles and whilst the main focus may be on electric cars, bikes and scooters, there's a whole other world which needs to be electrified as well, most notably that of commercial vehicles. Now, one company has provided an innovative solution to that missing piece of the puzzle. Electric Assisted Vehicles, or EVE, is an Oxfordshire-based mobility firm that has designed and manufactured a wide range of fully electric delivery vehicles designed for that last mile run in an urban environment. And founder and CEO Adam Barnby believes that that is the most important part to tackle. Okay, so Adam, thanks for chatting with us today. So I suppose first and foremost, what has been the journey and the history and the background to Eve? So Eve's a company that I formed um, actually at the birth of my third child. So um, I really wanted to make a, a difference. Uh, my other company has been uh, instrumental in, in developing product for the automotive industry. Um, and I really wanted to create a product for ourselves that was fit for purpose for solving one problem, and that, that being the last mile. Um, and that's where, that's where we started. We, we ended up with a, a customer, um, DPD, who are the UK's largest um, carrier. And they really wanted to develop and build a last mile delivery vehicle with us that was fit for their um, requirement. So you start with that first customer. And now when you, look at, when you look back and you look at that journey as a whole from where you started, what's the picture like for Eve now? So I mean, from, it's still the same mission. You know, we want to, we want to basically make a difference. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean electrifying everything. Uh, and for me, really, it's about uh, getting away from legacy operation. That's, that's the mother of all the problems that we've got. We haven't changed our, our way of doing things. Um, so really what we're trying to do is create product that enable change, not just enable the, electri the, the transfer over to electrification. Yeah, you talk about how important it is. I mean, when you look at the sort of EV space at the minute, there's loads of different startups. I mean, we were here a few months ago with Film of Everati, just down the road in the same base and obviously there's a lot of interest and sort of the headlines are all these different EV conversions and EV startups and cars but how important is it for things like this like you said the last mile sector and the delivery and the sort of commercial vehicle space to be electrified as well that's what you talk about making making a difference yeah so I mean, first of all there's nothing wrong with the, the you know the electrification of old EVs and you know buying new EVs you know and the adoption of that is 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 really important um, the biggest issue that we have, though, is that you know everyone's living at home now, and they're, they're not going to work as much. The rise of uh, last mile uh, in terms of like, online sales, etc., has increased 30%. This year, it will do the same next year. So, the carbon footprint that we are inevitably creating because of things like COVID and you know the the, the move towards moving from uh, working from home has really led to actually we need a we need a very fast brutal change just like we had in covid which was a very sort of a positive step change in terms of you know moving over to uh, decarbonized solutions for for transport we need to have that that same sort of brutality in the way we look at how we uh, adopt an electric fleet of vehicles and that isn't just replace like for like yeah you just mentioned that word electric fleets of vehicles now We've stood here and we've got quite a, a long line of them now, but what does your sort of product range and lineup of vehicles consist of? So at the moment we went with the, the last mile uh, product to start with to get that to market as quickly as possible. Um, that's been really successful working with some really large companies, but as part of um, working with those large companies, we've been able to plug into their requirements and understand their requirements. Um, we're, we're a design and engineering company, first and foremost, so we're able to listen to the customer, understand exactly what their problems are, and a design product that specifically meets um, their requirements. So that doesn't just mean take a diesel van off the road, put an electric van in place. It means what's the problem? The problem is getting product to the last mile. This does the last mile. How do you then get the stuff to this last mile vehicle and leave that vehicle in the city center. We've come up with a multiple different um, options, things like the Lynx vehicle, which had just come out. Um, that is essentially a dynamic hub. So rather than you having a fixed bricks and mortar property in the center of a city that you distribute from, which is very rigid, very restrained, you have a, a dynamic hub, which is a vehicle that moves around and is far more reactive in the demand that's required to deliver to that last mile. You talk about that sort of demand for the last mile sector. It's, 
it's almost uh, an area of transport and sort of logistics that people sort of ignore or seem to forget about when you talk about like I said transport or logistics people think of like massive arctic lorries going up and down the country but how big of a problem is that or how big of a sector is that last mile sector and how important is it to electrify that because it is a big piece of the puzzle isn't it well the biggest issue is uh, for, well there's two issues obviously it's a it's a big polluter from a from a carbon point of view but actually it's also the largest cost the final mile usually accounts for more than 50% of the total cost of that delivery. So the carriers want a much easier and quicker and cheaper solution to do that last mile delivery. Um, with a vehicle like this, you can pretty much guarantee your journey times. You can go down cycle lanes, two pedestrian zones, you can park at the side of the road, you can't get a parking ticket. Um, you, know, you are averaging twice the speed than you would in a van in the city centre. So actually, you can already see just by saying that the optimization of this vehicle over a, over a van is you know, near enough 40 to 50% more than, uh, than its old sort of diesel equivalent. Yeah. But yeah, you talk about the different carriers and the different customers you've got. Obviously, you mentioned DPD, but what's been the sort of uptake in these vehicles and the interest? Who are you working with currently? So, uh, I mean, uh, unfortunately, a few of them I, I can't name, but um, we do have a, a few automotive OEM companies that are working with us. And we've got very large grocery um, delivery chains that are also looking at this as a solution. Um, again, it's about trying to find that sweet spot of, of fleet mix for them so they end up with uh, a much better solution than what they've currently got. Um, now, whether that is someone like Anacardo doing grocery chain delivery um, or someone like a laundry heap who do um, you know, home, home deliveries and collections of, of your laundry, the problem is the same. Um, they have to get goods in and out of that city centre and the most efficient way is to do it on something like a cargo bike. Yeah, and now... Over the course of the history of EVE, obviously, uh, I'm assuming it's not all been plain sailing. There's going to be some hiccups along the way. So what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've had to face to, to get the company to where it is today? Uh, I mean, the, the biggest challenge, and it's, it's a great excuse at the moment, which is, which is annoying, uh, has, been, has been COVID and, and Brexit. The acceleration of the sort of the cycling industry has meant that the parts and the components that we originally designed the bike for either no longer exist or the lead times on them are just stupidly long. So we've gone from uh, having a bike that's sort of 60% made internally, 40% external supply, to about 80, 85% internal manufacturing now, so that we can guarantee that quality and that, um, uh, and that supply chain. Because we have had issues with, with parts failing and um, you know, customers having a bad experience because of um, our, our, our poor quality of supply. Yeah, just off the back of that, you talk about the design process. I was wondering if you could talk to us about the, the whole process of building one of these vehicles from the ground up. And from the research and reading I've done, it seems like these are almost as sustainably made as, as they can be, really. Yeah. So, again, I didn't want to make a contradictive vehicle. Um, electric vehicles are great, but they weigh over two tonnes, usually. And nine times out of ten, they're carrying around 100 kilos of person, which for me is just... Is sacrilege. We shouldn't be allowing that to happen. Um, this is a 150 kilo vehicle that carries 150 kilos. And Eve's, Eve's premise is that we should be as light as possible and carry as much weight as possible, be as efficient at carrying that weight. Um, and that then gives you some different engineering challenges. Um, for example, it's 150 kilos and it can carry 150 kilos of weight. That means that your engineering around the suspension and the, and the way it, it dynamically works from a braking and, and, and steering point of view are completely different to that of a, of a normal automotive vehicle. Yeah, and in terms of some of the, the materials that are made, so this, for example, what's this made out of? The, it's, it's a steel frame, I'm assuming? Yeah, so um, we've used lots of recyclable materials like steels and plastics. This is a polypropylene, so we can easily uh, recycle polypropylene. The bodywork is made out of a natural flax material, um, so it's a, it's a byproduct of growing flax seed. And then we use a bioresin to actually uh, to actually bind it up and, and make and make this structure that you see behind me. So. Okay. And in terms of the sort of power and how it moves and the sort of technical specifications of the vehicle, obviously it is going to be used in city centres and for that last mile delivery, as we've as we've spoken about. So these are regulated like an e-bike, aren't they? So obviously there's limits on how fast they can go. But how many sort of miles and can it do in a lifetime and on a on a single charge, if you like? So we've, we've, we've got to that point now where it's developed so that it will do uh, the average day for a courier company, which is between 40 and 50 miles per day. And that's usually six days a week as well. Um, the life of which, you know, we've, these vehicles are actually coming back around now for their, uh, for their yearly service. Um, and we've noticed that, you know, on some parts like brakes, for example, we're having to upgrade brakes. 
to make sure that they last um, a, a, a decent amount of time for, uh, from a service period point of view. Um, things like the actual uh, vehicle itself from a, from a service and maintenance, we do a preventative maintenance program because these are, it's far easier for our customers to understand when they're going to be off the road than when they're off the road um, because of an issue. So preventative maintenance for most of our customers is really important. Obviously these are going to be part of a much bigger picture in the future. Obviously they're going to be used for the last mile delivery sector but obviously there are vehicles like we spoke about, the, the lorries going up and down the country all over. So how do you see the whole industry of electric vehicles changing over the next 10 years or so? Are there, is there more that needs to be done to electrify the whole country or do you still accept that there are things like lorries and that, that they're always going to have their place in the petrol and diesel world? So intercity, you're never going to get rid of that sort of long haul haulage, um, lorry, big van area. But inner city, vehicles will be banned full stop whether they're electric or not. They're already, that's already starting in parts of London, uh, Bristol, etc. And especially even in Europe, it's, 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 uh, Paris is a fantastic um, model for where I think the future of our cities look because they basically just got rid of all the, all the roads. They're now cycle lanes and pedestrian zones. Um, if you're asking me what I think the future of the of sort of inner urban mobility is, it doesn't include a car in it. It includes micromobility based products. And we're actually involved in, in different micromobility uh, infrastructure projects where we can showcase where we think that this sort of commercial led micromobility has to fit into our, our current infrastructure, which is not what we have right now. Um, equally, the government have set aside £2 billion, in the UK at least. Uh, for cycling and walking infrastructure. And that will be a very large part of, of our city centre futures. Okay, perfect. And now just to finish things up, what you, you spoke about the, the future there for the industry in general, but the future for EVE itself, what sort of projects have you got working on or what does the future hold that you can share with us and what, what have you got to look forward to? Yes, I mean, um, we, we're, we're ramping up our production quite rapidly over the next couple of uh, months, especially on our, our last mile platform. This platform itself will have a multitude of different bodies on it. There'll be a personal version, there'll be a taxi version. Um, aside from the cargo bike, we've also got the Lynx project, and that's, that's particularly very exciting because we've got a lot of um, big blue chip corporate customers that are gonna come out and announce their involvement in that. Um, and that's everything from grocery chain companies right the way through to waste management companies. Um, and then there's the, the row row box, which is our roll on, roll off, Euro pallet size cube which I believe will become a, a standard um, system of moving outer city goods and in between city into the inner city without it having to be uh, re-sorted, retouched. Most of the time, packages have to come from depots into the city, then get sorted, then go into the city, maybe even to a third depot, get sorted again. And I believe that we can, or we have to then start um, organizing those pre-consolidated box outside of the city centre. Okay, so it's finally time to have a go. I've got my helmet for safety, I've got my coat because it is really quite cold and windy, but still we've got this whole airfield to play with it, so I'm gonna get in now and have a go. So I'll see you in a bit and let you know what I think. So this only weighs 150 kilos, and while it's light, it is quite nippy as well. It's got loads of different speed settings, so you can get up to a pretty decent speed in this, but as well as it being light, it's also really nimble, and you can see how it's perfectly designed for being in those city urban environments and just nipping in and out and making all those different deliveries. So it might be quick, but it's also really comfortable as well. This isn't the smoothest airfield in the world. There's a lot of different changing surfaces and there's a few potholes as well, but it copes with them really well. And I've just been speaking to Adam off camera and a big criteria for when they were designing this and manufacturing it was they were well aware people were gonna have to be sat in this seat for about eight hours a day delivering. And you can really see that. So it is really comfortable to drive as well. But above all else, this is really, really fun to drive. And I've had such a good time being behind the wheel or the handlebars of this little electric assisted vehicle. And whilst it is quick and it is comfortable when we've had about half an hour just to ourselves on this airfield, 
It is really, really important to remember that this is playing a big, big part in that issue of electrifying all different forms of transport. That's all for this video. If you liked it, then please do remember to like and subscribe. You can also head over to our channel and check out all our other electric car reviews. And for daily news coverage, features and much more, you can also head over to evpower.co.uk. Thanks once again for listening and we'll see you on the next video.